Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Daily Critique. Today's image was submitted by John, who is an advanced photographer from Illinois. Don't have the metadata on this image. Short backstory here, John says he just uh, took this on a day trip to Chicago. Let's get right into the video. Um, color is obviously a huge part of the design of this image, and one thing I like about this right away is um, red is a color, sort of red-orange, plays really well with the ideas of black and white. So these color ideas to me are working well together. I also have um, a feeling uh, on the uh, structure of the building here, the framework of uh, cyan, sort of a subtle cyan or blue. And on the printer's color wheel, red and cyan are opposite. So we're getting a sense of some complementary color here. And I think that plays really well. The other thing that I'm enjoying about the image is just the idea of playing opposites off of each other as a creative concept. Um, to me, there are sort of multiple ways you could look at this as being opposites. One is the sculpture looks to me like the skeleton of a building beams, and the background of the building is obviously showing sort of the skin or the outside of the building. And you also just have different um, architectural energies, a lot more simple pattern um, and lower energy pattern, um, just simple rectangles on uh, the face of the building and the background, and obviously the sculpture. Uh, has a lot higher energy in terms of quality of line and these real strong triangles um, and shapes. Um, and it's an important thing to remember if you're wanting to work more conceptually uh, from a creative standpoint, uh, looking for opposites to play off of each other can be a real powerful uh, creative concept. I like the fact that John has come in on both the building and the sculpture. Uh, so we're not uh, finishing those ideas. We're somewhat abstracting the ideas by shooting a part of them. I think that's where uh, I'd like to start talking about uh, perfect world variations uh, for this image. I think that we could come in uh, even tighter uh, on the image and potentially hold the viewer's attention longer. Uh, one of the things that I've talked about quite a bit uh, if we're talking about traditional uh, design uh, when it comes to photography is uh, really being careful about what we do with the top of the frame. When we're shooting any kind of subject, a face could be a still life or it could be something like this sculpture, it's really tempting to go up and finish the top of the idea and include a negative space above it. Uh, one challenging thing about that um, is that the top of the frame um, already has a lot of visual weight because of gravity and because uh, we uh, tend to automatically uh, want to move on the page uh, from the top to the bottom. So when you combine that natural movement of reading with gravity, top of the frame has a lot of weight before we put anything in the frame. Um, another idea that can make including the top of the room or negative space over a subject a challenge in a photograph is that in uh, so many setups or scenes, the light is going to be coming from the top of the scene. And uh, you see that here. In a, Obviously, in an architectural situation, um, the brightest part of the scene is going to be moving up towards the sky. And in this image, the brightest part is here. Then you combine gravity. You combine the fact that we want to go there. And uh, to me, when I look at this image, I think that one of the main subjects is the sculpture. And then maybe another main subject or idea would just be playing the sculpture off of the building as a background. And uh, when I look at this image, what happens to me is I get pulled in a very powerful way up to here, which, and to my way of thinking about the image, is simply the negative space that is allowing this idea to finish. Uh, but do we really need for the idea of the sculpture to finish at the top uh, to, uh, to make a point about the difference between the sculpture and the building or to play those ideas off of each other? And I don't think we need to do. What happens for me is when we crop, and I'm just not thinking about this much at all, let's just come down somewhere uh, uh, to where we're unconventionally cropping the subject. Um, now, for me, instead of getting pulled up to that top part and sort of past the main idea of the image, um, I now see the sculpture and I sort of move through these spaces in here on the z-axis on the image. You've got the x-axis, which is across left and right, y, up and down, and then z-axis is the illusion of being able to move through or into the image. For me, when we lose that top part, I feel like I'm much more likely to see the sculpture, but then to feel like I'm moving under these openings and back to the idea uh, of the building. To me, the other thing about a crop like this is that if I wanted to make some color adjustments to the image, I talked about the subtle blue in the background uh, before. 
um, if I wanted to make some color adjustments to the image. Let's go into adjustment layers and let's say go to color balance. Click highlights here and uh, add some blue there. Um, I've added a lot just for emphasis. Um, but now in this version of the image with more blue back there, um, not only can I sort of move the viewer through on the z-axis, but I can start to make this image more about color, where if I have that bright part at the top, uh, that's it's so high energy uh, that it could even sort of overwhelm this color adjustment, and you wouldn't move back and forth in terms of color. The other thing uh, that I'm seeing more of now uh, that I don't have that top part is the reflections down in here and we could even try and bring that out. It looks sort of like a rust color reflection. We could bring that up and, and have sort of a third layer of information that could potentially move the viewer on the z-axis underneath and through the sculpture, then to the face or the skin of the building, and then maybe all the way into the building itself uh, to see those uh, reflections. Um, another thing that I'll say is that, you know, a general rule uh, when it comes to light, which is such a major part of design uh, in any photograph, is that when we uh, are shooting a big space or a bigger space, uh, that uh, a soft broad light a lot of times uh, doesn't work as well as more of a dynamic light. To me, if I was going to shoot this wide on the building and the sculpture, I might want to try it at twilight where I had different uh, qualities of light or different color temperatures of light that could drive depth or uh, a side light, more of a dramatic lighting pattern. And the more we sort of come in and abstract and start to talk about sort of the inherent qualities of things, and a lot of times a simple lighting pattern can work really well. And that's another reason why um, I might crop in here on the image uh, like we've done. Uh, as I push more towards abstract, I have more of a simple lighting pattern. And I think there are crops that are even tighter than this one that could work really well. If you could come over to somewhere like here and here, and do more of a square kind of crop. Um, and I think that uh, could be quite a bit of fun, sort of playing these shapes in here off of this anchoring part um, of the sculpture. Let's just back out now and go back to um, John's original. And I'll make one more point. Anytime I'm looking at an image and I think the light is challenged, let's say that I'd like to have more of a dynamic light, I'm always going to look um, at the image in black and white. And one point that I wanted to make today about looking at an image in black and white, to me this is particularly true of the green channel if you're going to use channels, the monochrome versions of the channels, to get a quick preview of an image in black and white. The green channel is a pretty tonal neutral choice here. And one nice thing about looking at an image in black and white is a lot of times to me it can help you to see more of the inherent weight of things in the image when we get rid of color. To me, in the black and white version of this, it really helps to see just how much visual weight um, this part of the shot, just the negative space that's allowing the sculpture uh, to sort of exist in the image, the top part of it, to separate just how much visual weight this has. And if that's not a main subject, uh, then you could ask yourself, if this is taking on all the visual weight in the image and it's not a main subject, uh, then how could I get rid of it? And in this scene, if we had a zoom lens, we're able to get closer, maybe just in camera, to come on down into this part of the image and lose uh, that top part. Having said all that, really like the color ideas that John's working with here. Love the subject selection. Uh, really dynamic architectural subject, and I also love the idea of uh, playing opposites off of each other. It can be very powerful from uh, creative standpoint if we're wanting to think more conceptually as photographic artists. Big thank you to John for sharing this image with us on the Daily Critique. Hope to see you again real soon on the Mindful Eye.